Now we begin part two of the dynamic heat transfer solution. So this is where we left off before. We had a nicely rescaled uh, system uh, of equations that represent the partial differential equation for heat conduction in a rod. How do we solve this problem? That is what this next uh, uh, video is going to uh, try to introduce in a very brief amount of time. The, the classical way to solve this, this problem, once you have the nice homogeneous boundary conditions, that means you have the zero boundary condition uh, for either the flex term or for the constant or the, the temperature term. Once you have these, then you can use what's called, you can actually use these more generally, but let's just keep it simple now. You can use a process called separation of variables, where you suppose a solution, theta, a function of position and time, is actually equal to the product of two independent solutions that when multiplied together give you the solution. So, uh, and they, they, they're the solutions for the, in, for the different variables. And what, what this will do is allow us to solve a system of ODEs and, as opposed to uh, one PDE. So we have, if, if for this to work, we suppose that the solution can be a product of a function of position, calling it phi, times a function of the time. H is a function of tau. So you can substitute this in to your... Uh, your differential equation and uh, rearrange the terms. But if we just so first substitute this in, this approximation or this, this uh, method, h of tau into, for theta equals del squared phi, function of psi, times h of tau del psi squared. Well, if you look at, this is where the, the, the separation of variables uh, uh, gets its power. If you look at these partial derivatives, you'll notice it's a, it's a partial derivative of uh, two functions that have different dependent variables. And so you only have to take the derivative of uh, one term on each side because this will be considered a constant relative to what you're differentiating against. So over here we'll have del h, del tau, on this side, times phi, function of psi, equals on this side, we'll have h of tau, del squared, phi, del psi squared. Now what you'll notice is that we have the derivative of h with respect to tau, and we can rearrange this, and phi with respect to psi, but phi and h are now dependent upon only one variable each. And so these are no longer partial derivatives, they're actual total derivatives. So now we can rewrite this equation as dh d tau times 1 over h equals 1 over phi del squared phi del psi squared. So we have two sides of this equation and they depend on different independent uh, variables. This is a function of tau alone. This is a function of psi alone. So when is this ever going to be true? You have something that has a completely different dependence on, on variables. You have one that can vary in time, or the dimensionless time, one that can vary in position, or dimensionless position. The only uh, occurrence where this equality will hold is if they're both equal to a constant. So let's make this constant for this problem minus lambda. And obviously, you're giving it a minus sign because it helps things in the future and lambda is going to eventually be the eigenvalue for the solution. So you can kind of see where this is going right away. This is equal to minus lambda. We have to consider what lambda might be. It could be positive, negative, or zero. Let's, let's look at the h term first. So we have dh dt times one over h equals minus lambda. So 
what is the solution of this equation? Well, it depends. If lambda, let's, let me just write down a solution to this equation, then we'll discuss it in the future. To solve this, you just have to integrate it twice. It's very straightforward. You have the integral dh over h on this side equals integral minus lambda dt. You can integrate that term and end up with log h equals minus lambda tau plus some constant. And then you take the, the exponential of both sides to get h of tau equals, the, when you take the exponential of both sides, this becomes a, a constant in front. So I'll call it some c0 uh, times exp to the minus lambda times tau. So if lambda was greater than zero, it's okay. This exponential term will decay in time. If this lambda is less than zero, well, the exponential of a positive term times t the dimensionless time, this thing is going to blow up in your face. It's just going to keep going and going and going uh, with no end in sight. So this is uh, uh, with exponential growth. All right, continuing on with this one. So, as we just discussed, uh, lambda greater than zero is okay. Lambda less than zero exponential growth, not okay. Bottom line. So, that's great. Let's move on to the next uh, part of the problem. Uh, this is the total derivative, d squared, phi, d psi squared times one over phi equals minus lambda times phi. And then the boundary conditions, after you substitute in uh, here, phi at zero equals zero, phi at one is also equal to zero. So what is the solution of this, uh, this problem? Well, it, let's just, uh, what do you know that you take the derivative of comes back after you take the derivative of twice in a row? Well, you should be thinking sines, cosines, but there's a funny minus sign that kind of crops back up, and also uh, uh, exponentials. Well, sine and cosines, you can derive from exponentials. So let's just work with exponentials first, get a characteristic equation, and solve this problem. So what we, let's assume a solution e to some r times psi. Then let's substitute this in to our differential equation. This is our approximated solution for phi. That's our guess. The guess. So let's substitute this in. D squared E R psi D psi squared times, uh, let's say, equals minus lambda. Uh, this is not equal to minus lambda phi. I just realized that. I'm not going to go back and fix it in this video. But yeah, I, I did two things at once here. This is, this is the correct solution right here. Equals minus lambda times phi, which in this case is going to be equal to e to the r psi. So when you solve this equation, you do this differentiation twice, you get this uh, r squared equals minus lambda because the e uh, terms disappear. Now r squared equals minus lambda. What is the solution to that? What squared equals minus lambda? Well, the only solution for this is r equals plus minus square root lambda times i, the imaginary uh, number, square root minus 1. So phi, the solution of this problem, phi of psi equals e to the plus minus uh, square root lambda times i times psi. Now, if you've taken differential equations, you can convert this uh, from having an exponential with an imaginary uh, uh, term 
into sines and cosines. I'm not going to go into details of that. You can look it up in a differential equation textbook, or you can look on Wikipedia. I'm sure somewhere on Wikipedia there is uh, uh, that worked out. So what you end up with, though, in the end, is that phi of psi equals c1 sine square root lambda psi plus c2 cosine square root lambda psi. That's enough of this video. In the next round, we're going to find out what uh, satisfies lambda. We just specify it as a constant. We don't really know what it is yet. And then identify what C1 and uh, C2 are uh, in the uh, series solution for the dynamic temperature distribution in a rod.